I'm Axel Müller. I'm the I'm working in the University of Leeds I'm at the, as the director of the International Legal Congress, but I'm also working on early gunpowder and the development of early gunpowder and gunpowder artillery. The manuscript that I'm looking at is the Royal Armory's Volume 34 manuscript, which is um, a very rare copy, the only one in existence in the UK, and there's only about 70-ish copies of it in existence in the world. And the manuscript is uh, called a firework book, or Feuerwerk book, or at least that's what it calls it in the text. And it's a book that describes the various different core stages, how to make gunpowder in very crude and very basic levels and ways. It has been not that much studies of it in the past. People were really um, more interested about the fact that the second part of it has got much more illustrations on, on it. And it's the big questions that I'm involved in is to see how much is it actually practically possible to, to recreate what is in there, how much can we understand what is in there. It's a text that's written in early New High German. It's just, the whole book is, is thought to be produced at some point in the first half to the first quarter of the 15th century. The first part is not illustrated at all, so it's written very much as a working manual and it's not that overly elaborate and overly colourful. It's a book that, that probably throws up more questions than answers. So it's called a firework book, but is it really a firework book? And the, that's where I, you look at original research that has been done on it before. People have written about it. A lot of people have argued it was a, a flashy show-off book, but was no, had no relevance to the truth. Um, there's been a lot of people have been working on it, especially the um, people at the Gunpowder Research Group in Denmark, um, to look at that I've been working with as well, to look at seeing, recreating some of the recipes and some of the bits that are in the Firework book, and many, many of them work, many of them do work, if you understand how to do it, because as with any recipe books, some things are not quite as clearly explained. If it's too obvious, just nobody tells you how to switch on your computer anymore, or nobody tells you how to, to do some day-to-day some -day practical things if you know how they work. Most of the copies of the Firework books in existence have been as many other medieval manuscripts have been taken apart and rebound at a later stage in life, some 16th, 17th, 18th century. So people were going through books where there were blank pages, they took the blank, only took the pages where there were text on it and rebound them with other ones and, and often are compiled with other texts of technical natures in different parts. The, this firework book that, is, um, 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 that we have has got a number of blank pages in there and also has got some different segments. First segment looks as if it was a kind of a standardized text. There were there are similar texts in existence of various different components of how to do certain parts. And then there's a second part which seems to be a bit more it's definitely written in a different hand. Some parts are written on on, on paper which is has got the same watermark on it, so there's a, a continuation of the, the time when it was written. But it was also writing, referring to the text before it and referring to the illustrations coming afterwards. So where it is rare is, is what one assumption could be that this book was a bit of a, of a combination of you've got master text, you've got some kind of instru general instruction, and then you've got your try it yourselves, as you find with modern cooking books as well. So you've got some, some section where you can put your notes in there, you can put some examples in there, and then in order to some comments on how you can refer back to what the original text was. And that gives us a bit more of an insight of what these books might have been like with the proviso that it could be just an oddity and it might be something totally different. But that's one of the theories that is we have. We don't know much about master gunners, what they were. We, there are some, some people have made some information. It was a new profession when, when our gunpowder artillery came into existence. We needed somebody to, to operate it. You need to have people who need to be willing to take risks because it was a dangerous business. You need to have people, as it describes in the firework book, that, in, that have got a certain disposition, certain ways that they are, they're they not too, um, as, it, as it says even in the text, they're not too prone to alcohol and so that they are able to, 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 um, to be moderate and to step away because if you're dealing with, with dangerous items it's not a very good idea to be too, too intoxicated and and so it is it is something that was used for people who were involved in the business of um, gunpowder artillery in the practice in the 15th century. The first first few few pages are very, very familiar, very traditional, and, and so even for somebody who's not that literate would then be able to see how these, these texts work. 
Also in the book it says that the, the master gunner needs to be able to read and write, and that's something which, which people sometimes think that in the Middle Ages people didn't read and write. In the 15th century, to do this job you need to be able to read and write, because in parts what it also states in there, there's so many different components you need to remember, and if you got the order wrong, then there may be some bad consequences. <laughs> It helps us a lot because it's, it's, the recipes give us some instruction, information about quantities, about mixtures and some, some ways of how to do it. And with, through experimental archaeology, through, through putting this into practice, through finding out how do these elements really give us, um, a, a, how, how do they really in practice work together? Can we start making some assumptions? It's one of the big, big, big questions for any early gunpowder artillery questions is how efficient was gunpowder artillery in the 15th or the 14th or the 16th century and how because it was non-standardized and there were a lot of factors involved in that, that how pure were the raw materials how much do people know about how to purify certain parts and make them pure and how much did the external circumstances for instance if your powder was wet it couldn't work how do you keep your powder dry which is a wonderful um, modern expression as well it, how did people use these elements in order to make working, functioning and effective gunpowder. And this book has a lot of various different components in there that give us a lot more insights which we wouldn't know without it.